Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be going over the chassis scanning and engine scanning and um, kind of how we set it up in the CAD, got the parameters. We'll also uh, go over the Mustang parts rig and kind of what we got there and how that worked out for us. Here's the, the Ranger kind of getting ready to, to go. Got the canopy on it, the engine's in the back. Uh, got it loaded up on the trailer, ready to go up to work. So here it is inside the shop. Uh, first thing though is I wanted to get the weights of the engine, see how they compared. So we got the factory EcoBoost engine here with the six-speed transmission. Uh, there is an alternator on this, no AC pump, no oil in the engine. There is oil in the transmission on this and it comes out right about 500 pounds so this is a certified scale so it's right out 500 pounds I think I think the increments about 20 pounds of, uh, so it may not it might be like 505 or 495 but you know, we'll call it 500 pounds and then this here is the engine out of the Ranger note that it does not have an alternator on it um, there's no oil in it and I think I might have drained the transmission on this um, as far as other accessories can't quite think of this pretty much there was no power stirring on this so there's not a whole lot of extra on that but anyway so the, the alternator you know might add like 10 pounds to it so it came in at 480 so really these engines are pretty much the same weight which is really why I'm going for this because you put in you know a 302 V8 or Coyote engine besides fitting them in there well 302 will fit in there pretty pretty easy but you're gonna be adding weight to the front overall um, but this there's no added weight so anyway um, here's the the Lima engine setup on a cart so we can start uh, scanning and getting some points from it this is a, um, a feral well no it's not a feral arm it's uh, brand is hexagon but um, it does both 3d scanning and also you can do point probing for what we're doing it's just going to be doing po point probing could be doing center line the crank um, engine perch location and also uh, center line well output of the transmission and the transmission mounts on this engine and then this here is the EcoBoost engine set up on there kind of doing the same thing going to be looking at the actual uh, mounting bolts on the engine kind of where I highlighted in red there with the paint marker on it on both sides this um, this is the passenger side it's kind of funky because you got there there's one bolt hole up there to the left, which is out of plane, and then also you have that rib in there, so that kind of creates a little um, jog in the, the motor mount, but otherwise uh, not too bad. And I also got the, the front of the crankshaft on this and getting the, the center line on that. And also we go for the, um, the bottom transmission mount because this is going to help with our cross member building. Uh, make sure to reference the oil pan, try to get the most uh, points in that so we can clear the cross member on the truck. And also got the, um, the location of the rear of the, the bell housing, kind of know where the engine is located and also try to get some points of where the transmission is uh, so we can figure out clearance within the transmission tunnel. So we got those set over there, going to grab the, the truck next. But before we do that, we're going to uh, do take some points on this truss, <laughs> transmission cross member. Um, kind of get the outside where it bolts up to the frame. And then um, where it interfaces to the transmission. Then we can kind of overlay it with the range of transmission and line that all up. And then I'll get to that later when we actually get into the CAD stuff, which would just be a brief overview. Anyway, um, so yeah, here's a picture of me unloading off the trailer. Kind of gets spoiled with a nice shop overhead crane. Uh, don't have to use the ramps. Just lift up on the front of the truck and then roll it off and lift up on the back. And makes it super easy. Also for positioning. So here's the uh, truck over here. Kind of got the front end up on blocks. And all we really are doing on this is getting location of the, trans the motor mounts, uh, cross member, firewall, where the brake booster is I think we also did where the heater box is and also the where the radiator attaches so later on we can work on uh, setting up a custom radiator for that and then here we go into the CAD which is kind of like a finished product and kind of just roughed in a, um, 
a block for the engine. Didn't really care about the aesthetics of that, but just kind of wanted an idea of where stuff is interfering. You can kind of see where there's that gray cross member down underneath the engine. Wanted to uh, see where the clearances were on that and didn't quite get a good representation because later on we'll have to go in and do a custom oil pan we'll get to that later anyway you kind of see our cross member for the transmission and then the motor mount on the passenger side there so really what we did with this is kind of overlaid everything lined up uh, the crank center line on the vertical plane so left and right it was correct and then um, i'd have to go back in and check but i did have to bump this up just a little bit um, on the it's just a little bit higher than the factory engine to get some extra clearance on that cross member and then we um, bumped it back a little bit right actually I think play a little bit with forward and backwards because we didn't want to run to the firewall too much um, so and then fortunately on these this engine it's actually there's not a whole lot going on on front so we're gonna have quite a bit of room up front between the engine and where our radiator would be so that's gonna have some extra room there to put a uh, front mount intercooler Anyway, so um, yeah, that's kind of it for um, the, I, I refer to it as scanning, but just kind of getting points and stuff off off the engine, off the Ranger, so we can uh, do this all in the CAD. And then what we end up with is these nice motor mounts. Um, this is, I uh, designed this stuff up in CAD, sent it off to a local fab uh, shop to get uh, cut out and bent, and then I did the, the welding on that. Kind of a... Um, prototype if you would say there was some clearance issues on this um, had to go back in and grind some stuff down and then we also have the transmission cross member which I was pretty pleased how that turned out just really simple um, straight cross um, channel iron there well it's a bent plate so it turned into channel iron but anyway so that has a nice angle in it for, to match the angle of the transmission uh, laying in there because of course it's not going to be perfect flat they, they have a slight uh, angle to them going to go right into the factory um, frame spots for the factory cross member and locate everything pretty nice so switching gears and moving on uh, gonna go over to the Mustang parts where you can kind of show you what I ended up with and why I went that route so I paid five thousand hundred dollars for this uh, car you see and I feel like it's a good price because from Ford, you're paying like five or six grand for just the engine. Um, I think for like the parts farm or something like that, you're going to be paying like three to four thousand dollars or more if you get a one that that's the turnkey. But anyway, I got the engine and the transmission and any other little things that I possibly wanted. And so now my plan was to pull out what I was going to take. Uh, maybe save out a few things and then part out the rest. So but before I did that, <clears throat> I wanted to put it into the shop and see if I could get it running. But that uh, quickly turned to a, a no-go when I realized that this uh, missing piece that I found in the floorboard was actually part of the oil pan. And the reason why there was no oil in the engine was because it had actually uh, sprung a leak. And I when I went to fill it up, all the oil I put in ended up on the floor. So hopefully it's a good engine, um, but we'll find that out later. So now we go on to actually disassembling, pulling the car all the way apart. Uh, the car was a premium model, um, had leather interior and all sorts of fancy stuff like that. So it was actually a, a pretty nice car. There's gonna be pretty good parts to, to sell off of it here. It had only 23,000 miles on it. Uh, another one of the nice things about this is someone put brand new tires on it because the person I bought it from was a shop and they had a customer that bought this wrecked and was planning on fixing it up. But I think the customer realized how expensive it was going to be to pay a shop to uh, fix it up. Anyway, they they replaced both front wheels on the front and put brand new tires all the way around. So that was a good chunk of change I was able to recoup. I think I got like 1200 bucks out of the wheels and tires. So... Anyways, kind of start ripping it down, um, taking the dash out, the seats out, all the interior, all the wiring harness, wheels and tires, um, suspension, and uh, drop the front end out in the cradle, which was a pretty cool thing on these is that they're all, um, the front and rear are cradles, so it was just the really the easiest way to get that out is just drop it down, put it on some uh, roll around carts, and just slide it forward. 
anyway, so yeah, this the car just got really stripped down to nothing, got the engine transmission out, and then later on I pulled it out of that uh, front suspension. Stripped down shell there, um, ready to, to take out of the shop, and I actually had a buyer for that, so uh, get to those photos there, but yeah, there's the the engine, the, the shell, and pretty much everything stripped out of it and put into put all the stuff in the storage kind of slowly sold it off the doors the trunk lid and stuff like that uh, recoup some money so then here we got that uh, shell kind of suspended up in the air it took me a while to actually sell this I think I had it for sale for half a year um, and ended up a guy I'm in Oregon and a guy drove up from Arizona to buy it which I was surprised at but it had a title it was a salvage title but it did have a title and so you could actually rebuild it I, I was thinking someone wanted a drift car a drag car or whatever and the body actually wasn't too bad it had a few dents in it but it wasn't too bad it was definitely fixable and good shell to start with anyway I got it here loaded up in the air and then the guy showed up with the the trailer and he just kind of stuck it on there and he strapped it down and away he went all right anyway um probably it for this video um probably the next one's gonna be actually more more interesting actually in the shop working but i just want to go over some of this stuff let you know kind of some information anyway i hope you like and subscribe and um keep following the channel and tune in for more next time